And I've gotten older and probably even fatter. I've been increasingly doing more art shows and Toy Machine becomes more and more of a handful every day. I have, seems like I end up taking on more things to do with the company and skating less. So I don't think I, I don't feel like I'm a, quite as valid as a pro as I was. Obviously, in the past, I just am not in the magazines getting coverage and doing the heavy lifting. But yet, they don't want to kick me off. Still, I keep asking them all the time. Like every time. I get a call from someone in America. I go, are you kicking me off finally? <laughs> but they don't want to kick me off. So Skating has always been, you're just an advertising tool in a way. You know, it's like while, while you're maybe winning contests or getting photos in the mag, you're worth, you're worth something. When you're not, you're done. And so I always, always thought like, you know, I'm, there's going to be a time coming soon for me that where I'm useless, you know, as a pro skateboarder and uh, that I'm still somehow semi doing it and like being able to skate and be part of it and and have people um, welcoming me as a, I don't know what, like a veteran guy or something, you know, like um, feels, you know, I'm, I feel still honored. So yeah, I don't, I think it's great. Like I don't look at it and go, oh crap, I'm only making slip-ons now I'm um, you know like if I have a if there's a if there's a use for me then I then I'm happy to like fill that use you know and if it's just making Templeton art shoes or chilling shoes then, then that's that's good too yeah. <laughs> Kevin edited it together mm. thinking that for sure I would say no and when I saw it I was like you know what let's just put that in as a as a bonus feature it's fucking like I don't have any ego to like worry about. It's like that happens sometimes. I fucking lost it. I was freaking out. I was completely out of character, like breaking stuff. I never break stuff. I never like used to get that mad or focus boards or anything. I was yelling at people walking by. There's like so much that wasn't even put into that. I yell at some kid for taking my photo. That's all I do all day long is walk around shooting people's, people's photos. And here I am like yelling at some kid, don't take my photo. And I was yelling at Kevin, like, give me the fucking tape, I'm going to break it, all this stuff. Like, I just thought I should be able to do this. But in fact, the spot was really fucking slippery, and it made it, like, ridiculously hard, something that should have been easy. And, yeah, so it was a mixture of that. And, like, thinking at the same time, like, I'm old, I'm losing it, like, you know, uh, my, where's my talent? You know, like, just losing, yeah, and you just, like, went nuts. But I didn't, I just said I retired, and... I think he just used it as a funny ending. So no one took it seriously. I don't think he took it seriously. You can't get rid of me that easy. Yeah. That's why I started my own company, so I can just keep my board out forever. <laughs> you know, this, <laughs> this is easily traceable back to Mike Burnett from Thrasher Magazine. He started doing this every time he... Uh, interviewed a, any toy machine writer, he would ask that question as a joke. The term has like become viral, even though it's not true. So I've never like been naked with any of my team writers. And in fact, this piece of art right here is the only person who I work with who I've ever seen naked, really. That's Kevin Barnett, you know, he does like all the toy machine videos. So he, he agreed to pose nude for me, but it's not like I'm ever asking you know, like, hey, if you ride for Toy Machine, you have to get naked or something like that. I mean, it's not like we're sitting around getting naked and doing art stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a myth. We'll bust the myth right here. There's no uh, nudity or weird stuff going on with the Toy Machine team. Well, the first part of that is I think a lot of artists like skaters. It's just a personality type where they... Uh, don't like to say much. You know, you ask a person, like, what kind of music do you like? And they'll say, like, oh, everything, you know. It's like, no one wants to be offensive and just say, I fucking like heavy metal, and that's it. Especially in art, you see these shows where it's just, like, Ed Templeton paintings, <laughs> you know? And I've always hated that. So I always want to have a name for every show or book or anything I do, just because I don't want it to be, like, my name in lights, like, <laughs> you know, 
at Templeton New Work or something like that. When a show comes up, I just have to come up with something. I think there was a lyric in a song I was listening to about a soul. I was thinking about how people see this, their soul as something different than themselves. You know? And I was thinking like, oh, so maybe what if my soul was worried but I wasn't worried? I thought, and then it just kind of, for me, it came into a funny statement because there is no separation between a soul and a person. So yeah. So there is like two meanings in a way. It's just like one is funny and one is deep, but like most art, the deep part of it, you sometimes have to just make up, you know? It's like, I think art sometimes is just presenting something to think about. Yeah, yeah, usually in a bad way, though. For instance, at the Beautiful Loser show, the first one in Cincinnati, I was, sitting in the, I was standing next to, my, next to my area, and a girl walked in, and I saw her just look around, and she was waiting for some friends to come up, and she's like, and her friends finally got to her, and she's like, oh, this is just frat boy art, let's go. And I was just like, what? It made me so angry, but... Um, but you know, obviously, she may have saw like a photo of like a skater drinking or something, and or a photo of a boob, and thought, "Oh, this is just just a snap judgment." But that's part of it too. Like I said, you just put it out there, and whatever happens, happens. It's uh, like really weird. At the museum shows, I have to, I've had to do like a talk beforehand, so that's that makes me nervous because I'm gonna have to like show up and speak with a b bunch of people I don't know and try to explain some things or like introduce my work which is really awkward and embarrassing and like speaking about artwork is always bad you always look like a douche no matter what you just look stupid or like or pretentious like talking about art so it's like yeah so it's like very nervous but if something like this is just like hey, it's just gonna be people coming to see the art and I just happen to be here and if someone wants to talk to me then I'm there to talk to you and you know it's like yeah I don't really get nervous anymore or worry about it it's just to me for me the la hanging the last piece and being finished that's the reason I came here and I'm doing this and and that that completion is for me like okay everything from here on out is just hopefully people coming and responding and thinking and looking and enjoying and whatever and it's not really my problem anymore <laughs> The way I work is very uh, on the fly, <laughs> and I don't stop people and get permission releases. I had to talk with a lawyer and go through the entire book and explain every single photo and how it was shot, and they came down to like five images, not like sex photos or anything like that, just photos that of young, young people that they thought this is a possible lawsuit and we don't want to do it. So I said, no way, I'm not going to take these images out. I'm not going to put black bars over the eyes. I think it's stupid. It ruins the integrity of the work. And so, yeah, we just contacted a different publisher in Italy, and they didn't ask any questions, and we made it. <laughs> so, yeah. Like a lot of artists say, like, you know, I need to do this, or I wouldn't be able to live, I'm tortured, I need to, like, get this stuff out. It's like, no, I, I don't see it like that. I mean, that informs, that made me who I am, and that, in turn, makes, makes me make the person that makes this kind of stuff. But there's no, like, psychological torture involved. My brother is actually more tortured by it. Like, he wants to, like, find my fa our father and, like, talk to him and ask him why and all this stuff. It's kind of fascinating for me to, like, see the two standpoints when I talk to my brother because for me I'm like if he would have stayed in our life he was such an asshole I like none of this that I none of the things I have probably would have happened for me something like 80 percent of people that are grown up Christian or Catholic stay in that thing and, and it's really rare that someone like denounces it and becomes an atheist or something and that's kind of what happened to me the stuff that happens in the world is like it's crazy. So I'm always looking for these, like, those ironic things that are happening to photograph and open that conversation because I think it's, like, an interesting topic for sure. And, uh, and there are clearly are statements, like, I am ridiculing it in a way. I told him that that's crazy, you know? I think by, by nature I just do this when I'm skating sometimes. So there's a photo and I'm like, my hands are like that. And, uh, yeah, so the, the caption on the photo was, Ed 
Templeton subliminally worships the devil. And my grandparents saw it and thought it was like literal and wrote this big letter to me saying, if you have chosen to worship the devil, you should probably keep it out of the public eye. And to me, that letter is amazing because I didn't put it in there to ridicule them, although it's a funny letter. I put it in there to show like they were going to love me still, even if I was going to be a Satan worshiper, which would be the worst thing ever to them. They were still going to love me. They were like tell, trying to give me advice, like, if you want to do that, just maybe you should keep it out of public because it'll help you a little bit, <laughs> you know? The first video I shot was in 1990 for New Deal. And Paul Schmidt and Chris Miller call me up and say, we're coming to shoot your part today. And they literally come to my house and I take them to the high school and I skate one day. And you know, it's Paul Schmidt, the guy who owns the company with this giant VHS camera, you know? And also obviously that's changed. Let me put it this way. The only thing that has ever sucked about skating is the skate industry. And skating itself hasn't changed. The size of the wheels and the boards have changed and the tricks have gotten a lot better. Or evolved, of course. But that's it. Hope that answers your question, Jacob. Essentially, Neil Stark is my sponsor. And I demand, and you know, like, like I, as a sponsor might demand a video part out of my guys, he demands an art show. <laughs> it's not quite like that, you know? But that's why I've come to Copenhagen now three times for shows is because he's based here. And so every couple of years he invites me to do a show. And, and in theory, if I work with him longer, then it will be sort of like that all the time. I, every, every two or three years, I'll probably do a, come and do a show here. Everybody considers it one of the best cities in the world for quality of life. And all the times I'm here, I kind of agree. I think it's really nice, all the people riding bikes. And, but then all the locals tell me that the weather is mostly super shitty all year. So we always think about leaving the States if we can and living somewhere in Europe would be real nice. And Copenhagen's always on the, on the list. Well, I still would want to be the brain then, because <laughs> then I have no ass to my mouth. <laughs> But if I was going to be a real centipede, yeah, I was yeah, the brain, I guess. In the health food stores, they have a vegan version of Nutella. Um, but I don't think I've ever had it at my house in the United States. But if I had it, I would keep it in my pantry. <laughs> I feel like it's better room temperature. So when you want to spread it on something, it's already, it's not so hard. <laughs>